Hello friends, today we shall discuss solution of the questions which were asked in the forenoon session of GATE 2024 examination related to transportation engineering. The first question is which one of the following statements related to bitumen is false? The first statement is flash point of a bitumen is the lowest temperature at which application of a test flame causes vapors of the bitumen to catch an instant fire in the form of flash under specified test conditions. Now if you recall this is the definition of flash point. The flash point is temperature at which vapor will momentarily catch the flash or the fire. So this statement is true. Second is softer grade bitumen possesses higher softening point than hard grade bitumen. It is not correct because softer bitumen means high penetration value and high pe penetration value means low softening point and therefore this statement is not correct. Softer grade bitumen will have low softening point. The third kinematic viscosity is a measure of resistance to flow that is by definition and therefore statement is true. The, third, the fourth is ductility test is carried out on bitumen to test its adhesive property that is ability to stretch. And therefore, this statement is also true. That is the ductile. Bitumen is ductile if it is stretchable. Therefore, the answer is B that is softer grade bitumen possesses higher softening point than hard grade bitumen. This statement is false. The second question is also based on recall. As per International Civil Aviation Organization that is ICAO, the basic length is increased by x percent for every y meter raise in elevation from mean sea level. And the question is what are the values of x and y? As per ICAO, the correction in the runway length because of elevation above mean sea level is 7 percent for every 300 meter. And therefore here b is correct answer. Question number 3 is a numerical question. A car is traveling at a speed of 60 km per hour on a section of national highway having a downward gradient of 2 percent. The driver of the car suddenly observes a stopped vehicle on the car path at a distance 130 meter ahead and applies brake. If the brake efficiency is 60 percent, coefficient of friction is 0.7, Reaction time of driver 2.5 second, value of a small g 9.81, the distance required by the driver to bring the car to a safe stop lies in the range and four answers are given. Now here we should understand what is the meaning of brake efficiency. The brake efficiency 60% means the coefficient of friction will reduce by 60% and therefore the value of f in this question will be 0.6 multiplied by 0.7 that is 0 0.43 and you know the stopping side distance. The stopping side distance is SSD is 0.278 V into T plus V square upon 254 F plus minus G. G is the gradient. G is the gradient, F is the coefficient of friction. Now coefficient of friction here now, efficiency multiplied by the coefficient of friction. So 0.43. G is downgrade and therefore it will be negative 2%. V is 60 km per hour. Reaction time is 2 second. F value is 0.43 and G is minus 2 or 0 0.02. Therefore, if you put all these values, you get 0 0.278 into 60 into 2 plus 60 square upon 254.43 minus 0 0.02 and this is 77.1 meter. That is the answer. And if you look at the options, four options, the answer D is 75 to 79 meter. And therefore, option D is correct here. Question 4 is the free mean speed is 60 km per hour on a given road. The 
एवरेज स्पेस हेडवे एट जैम डेंसिटी ऑन दिस रोड इज एट मीटर सो यू कैन फाइंड आउट वट इज दैम डेंसिटी इफ द एवरेज स्पेस हेडवे इज एट मीटर देन के जे और जैम डेंसिटी विल बी वन थाउजेंड दैट इज मीटर इन वन किलोमीटर डिवाइडेड बाई स्पेस हेडवे दैट इज इक्वल टू वन ट्वेंटी फाइव वहीकल्स पर किलोमीटर एंड फ्री फ्लो स्पीड इज गिवन दैट इज योर वी एफ इज एट्टी किलोमीटर पर आवर द लीनियर रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन स्पीड एंड डेंसिटी मीन्स ग्रीन शील्ड इक्वेशन एंड अकॉर्डिंग टू ग्रीन शील्ड इक्वेशन द मैक्सिमम फ्लो और द कैपेसिटी द मैक्सिमम फ्लो क्यू मैक्स इज वन फोर्थ ऑफ फ्री फ्लो स्पीड मल्टीप्लाइड बाई जैम डेंसिटी so a simple question 1 by 4 into 80 into 125 and this is equal to 1875 1875 vehicles per hour that is the capacity so if you look at the options option c is 1875 and that is the correct option question number 5 it's a long question the following data is obtained from excel load survey at site The average rear axle load is twelve thousand kg. Number of commercial vehicles eight hundred per day. The payment will be reconstructed over a period of five years from the date of survey. The design life of the reconstructed payment is fifteen years. Use standard axle load of eight one six zero kg and annual average vehicle growth rate four percent. Assume that equivalent wheel load factor and vehicle damage factor are same. The cumulative standard axles for the payment design is to be calculated. Now here, the present day count is 800 per day, 800 commercial vehicles per day. The construction period is five years, and therefore we should project this traffic to next five years using this equation that P into one plus R power n. Now n is five years. Five years is construction period. R is four percent. So P is eight hundred. That is present day traffic. One plus point zero four into five. This is nine hundred seventy three commercial vehicles per day. This will be the traffic on the road after it is opened to traffic. Now the average rear axle load is given as twelve thousand kg. so we should find out what is the vehicle damage factor vehicle damage factor is calculated using fourth power law that is 12000 divided by standard axle load 8160 kg power 4 this will be 4.67 this is vdf and once you know vdf you know growth rate then you can find out what would be the design traffic after 15 years so this equation total traffic in msa will be 365 into a into 1 plus r power n minus 1 upon r multiplied by vdf now you know all these values a 973 r 0.04 n is now 15 years 15 years r is 0.04 vdf is 4.67 this value is 973 and therefore if you put all these values in this equation you get total msa equal to 33.22 this is million standard axle this is the answer the next question is the number of trains and their corresponding speeds for a curved broad gauge section with 437 meter radius r now 20 trains are running at a speed of 40 km per hour 15 trains at a speed of 50 12 at a speed of 60 8 at 70 km per hour and 3 trains travels at a speed of 80 km per hour if the gauge is 1750 that is dynamic gauge what should be the equilibrium tent now in such mixed traffic conditions when you have slow trains and fast trains we should find out equilibrium speed as the weighted average speed of all these trains 
and therefore the average speed will be n1 into v1 plus n2 into v2 plus and so on divided by total sum of n1 plus n2 and so on. That is the weighted average speed. So 20 trains at a speed of 40 plus 15 trains at a speed of 50 km per hour plus 12 at a speed of 60 plus 8 train at a speed of 70 plus 3 trains at a speed of 80. That is divided by total number of trains. That is 20 plus 15 plus 20 plus 15 plus 12 plus 8 plus 3. Now this is equal to 3 0 7 0 and this is 58. So this speed will be 52.93 kilometer per hour. That is the equilibrium speed and corresponding to this speed you can find out what would be the equilibrium Kent. The equilibrium Kent is given by this equation g into v square upon 127 r. R is the radius, G is dynamic gauge, V is the equilibrium speed. So, G is 1750 millimeter, V is now 52.93 kilometer per hour and R is given radius 437 meter, 437 meter. So, if you put all these values here in this equation, you get a Kent of 88. 0.34 millimeter that is equilibrium Kent. This should be equilibrium Kent. It says rounded off to the nearest integer and therefore it should be 88 millimeter should be the answer. 88 millimeter will be the equilibrium Kent. And the last question in the forenoon session was on vehicle trajectory. Now here the trajectory of 6 vehicles are shown and you have to find out the mean speed of these vehicles in the entire time space domain. Now here mean speed is total distance travelled by these 6 vehicles divided by total time they have spent in the section. So if you take the first vehicle let us say, first vehicle number 1 was in the test track or in the section for a time equal to 0 to 10 seconds and the distance traveled is from 400 to 500 meter. Therefore, it remains in the section for 10 seconds and it traveled a distance of 500 minus 400 that is 100 meter. Similarly, the second, second vehicle, second vehicle was from 0 to 15 seconds and it traveled a distance from 250 meter to 500 meter that is 250 meter. Similarly, you can find the, the distances traveled and time spent on by each vehicle in the test section. So, if you take let us say you make a table here, the first vehicle was from 0 to 10 second and it traveled a distance of 500 minus 400 meter. The vehicle number 2 it was from 0 to 15 second and it traveled a distance of 500 minus 250 meter. Third, 0 to 30 second and distance is 500 minus 100. Next one is from 5 second to 30 second and it traveled a distance of 400 minus 0. And the fifth vehicle was in the trap for 15 second to 30 second and it traveled a distance of 350 minus 0. And the last vehicle was in the section from 20 to 30 second and distance traveled is 150 to 0. So this is the time 10 second, 
फिफ्टीन सेकेंड थर्टी सेकेंड ट्वेंटी फाइव सेकेंड फिफ्टीन सेकेंड एंड टेन सेकेंड एंड डिस्टेंस हंड्रेड मीटर टू फिफ्टी मीटर फोर हंड्रेड मीटर फोर हंड्रेड मीटर थ्री फिफ्टी मीटर वन फिफ्टी मीटर सो टोटल डिस्टेंस इज सम ऑफ ऑल दीज by these six vehicles is 1650 meter and the total time in the track is 105 second therefore speed will be v 1650 divided by 105 and this is equal to 15.7 meter per second multiplied by 3.6 to get into kilometer per hour this will be 56.566 or 56 kilometer per hour rounded off to the nearest integer and therefore because it is 56.56 and therefore it should be rounded off to 57 kilometer per hour that is the answer these were seven questions in the forenoon session thank you very much for watching this video in the next session we will discuss questions which were asked in the afternoon session